All right, let's talk about the Cleveland defense going up against the 49ers offense. Kind of made an immediate reaction video talking about how I didn't really think it was a disaster by San Francisco. Not a game I'm worried about, but I kind of wanted to, once the All-22 came out, what exactly went wrong for the 49ers and what the Browns did just so effective in this game. Like this play, for example, it's going to be just a, a halfback screen uh, to Christian McCaffrey. Okay, makes sense. This is something that San Francisco does all the time, right? Is these screen passes, you know, doing things, getting the ball down the field in a bit more unusual ways, not just dropping back and throwing, you know, in a traditional passing way every single time. So for this to work though, again, we talk about San Francisco doing some unique things. It's going to be the guard and the, uh, the right guard and the center going all the way over towards the offense's left. Again, kind of what they like to do. They like to mix things up. They like to kind of catch you by surprise, help sell some fakes but Cleveland was doing a great job at not falling for fakes and when you don't do it now you're just having to move, run further if you're the 49ers watch out Cleveland has a really good job of you know they had a uh, George Kittle run over the middle but those players for Cleveland did not pay attention to that they knew they had help over there they're not worried about it so now those two players can move in and while yes San Francisco has a couple of offensive linemen who can run over and try and block them they're just not far enough away uh, or not far enough, uh, you know, to to get over there. Also, Miles Garrett kind of, you know, really knocked Trent Williams to the ground right there. Garrett got the better of Williams a couple of times in this game. In fact, Williams just did not have a good day, which is again for him still a very good day for most uh, offensive linemen. But by his standards, was not a great day. So that's another you know positive aspect for Cleveland. So okay, they're now all over this screen. Watch as Purdy throws it anyway. He couldn't really, you know, you can't see everything, right? Kind of got to get the ball out of your hands quickly. Gets blown up in the backfield. A really good stuff there by Cleveland. And this is just kind of what they did was they just played smarter, right? I mean, the Shanahan scheme is so much about fooling you and getting you out of position and, you know, taking advantage of your, your opponent's mistakes and forcing them to make mistakes. Well, for Cleveland, they just did a great job at matching that high intelligence, right? It was high IQ on high IQ, and Cleveland certainly won a lot more than they lost. And also something like this, which this is something that, you know, when we previewed this game, I, I picked San Francisco to win. And part of why I did was I felt like, well, Cleveland's defense is very good. They like to play their zone coverage a lot. And, you know, that's something that Shanahan kind of can eat alive uh, at times. It's, it's a lot easier to get players out of position when they're in zone. Cleveland didn't just play zone. They played a healthy amount of man coverage, which makes sense, right? I mean, you have those corners who can man up against the Niners receivers, which not a lot of teams do. Uh, and so they're saying, hey, let's just see if we can, you know, uh, cover these guys. The route you see on the screen, it's a good route against this type of coverage. Debo Samuel running a quick slant route. I mean, I know Samuel and McCaffrey got hurt in this game, but not immediately. They did have to cover those guys at points in this game. And watch as right when this play begins. I'm not going to sit here and say there's no window. There is a window. Perfect throw, perfect catch. This can be made. But that's kind of what you want to do as a defensive back, right? I think there's this idea that, you know, for a defensive back, what you should be trying to do is just making sure that there's no chance that a receiver can make a play. But in today's NFL, that's just not really how that works. NFL receivers are so good. The rules are shifted to help out NFL receivers. Trying to make a scenario where, to, you know, you can't make the play, it seems unlikely. I've kind of made the comparison. It's more of uh, basketball at this point, where this is Martin Emerson. For what you want to do is just make it a contested shot, right? And as you see, Purdy's throw was behind, and it ends up falling incomplete. It wasn't a great throw from Purdy, and you can blame the weather if you want. But at the same time, this is difficult if they're in this weather to keep pace, right? I mean, you're, it's slippery and you're not exactly sure where you're going. That's advantage receiver to get open, but it didn't matter because, you know, Emerson uh, kept close enough that it required a perfect throw and it wasn't a perfect throw. Like something like this is another example where, again, we're going back to man coverage here by Cleveland. It's a single safety deep, you know, man on man. So five eligible receivers on five, uh, you know, defensive backs or defensive players not, not all defensive backs but watch what happens as you see Purdy takes the snap and you know right here I mean this is usually when you're getting the ball out of your hands if you're San Francisco they like to throw the football quickly they want to get the ball out of Purdy's hands here but there isn't anything open I mean again you could make a contested shot uh here but 
you're not gaining too many yards, not going to gain the first down. It's second down, so gaining some yards helps. Brock Purdy is going to instead scramble. He's going to get outside the pocket. He's going to do a good job. I think one of the underrated parts of Purdy's game is his mobility. You know, picks up more yards than I think a lot of quarterbacks would have in that situation. At the same time, though, if you're Cleveland, you'll take this all day long. Sure, Purdy's pretty good uh, when he's outside the pocket, but you'll gladly have Purdy with the football as opposed to, you know, George Kittle or Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk or Christian McCaffrey. And I also thought that the 49ers uh, were not able to run the ball totally consistently in this game. I mean, you know, they were able to get the occasional, like, nice run. I think that the overall numbers are pretty good. But a lot of those were kind of unorthodox type runs, uh, even with the occasional big run. There were just as many stops. And, like, this is an example of what Cleveland was able to do well. Where first, watch as the center is going to go up to block uh, number six there for Cleveland. Number six, also known as Jeremiah Awuso koromora you know, one of the more agile uh, linebackers. And watch what he's going to do. As you see, he's able to easily sidestep that player. On top of this, I'm going to show, uh, you know, a couple more things. Going over there, you see that there's another uh, defense, another defensive player for Cleveland, making sure he gets sort of towards the offense's right, trying to make sure that he's clearing up the uh, running lane there. You have an interior defensive lineman going up against 65, pushing him very far back, which is disrupting where McCaffrey wants to go. Also, number 44, Sayon uh, Takaki on this play. Uh, he's, again, I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Sorry about the mispronunciation of the name, but it's going to be a good play where, you know, he's an unblocked player on this one. And watch how he's going to do a pretty good job at running McCaffrey down. McCaffrey does a better job at getting to the outside, but they still only gain a couple of yards on that play. McCaffrey's really good. You know, when he was healthy, he was still able to kind of, you know, make the best out of some bad situations. But you saw Cleveland's entire defensive unit really come together to just, again, force San Francisco to throw the ball, which, you know, again, we, we can talk about weather all we want. That doesn't affect the run defense game, and the run defense was still good. Also, it does affect the run defense game a little bit, but you know what I mean. Uh, it doesn't, it's not the massive main contributing factor or a big factor like it is in the passing game. And also something like this, where what's going to happen is this is going to be a, you know, clever concept by Kyle Shanahan. He, he runs clever concepts, right? Where you have Purdy going to roll out towards the bottom of the screen. You have a halfback going in that direction. They're kind of faking as though it's going to be just a quick flip to McCaffrey, but then they're not actually going to uh, throw it there. Instead, it's going to be a screen pass set up towards the top of the screen. As you see, Purdy is going to take the snap. He does roll out towards the bottom of the screen, gets ready to throw towards the top of the screen. couple things to note. For one thing, you have multiple Cleveland players right in Purdy's face, which, again, it's a screen pass. You're supposed to let people kind of go by, but it still does affect the throw. If, if you're right near the quarterback, still try to generate a pressure on the quarterback, right, no matter what the play concept is. Also, uh, further down the field, one thing worth noting is that in this situation, it doesn't seem terrible. You have a couple of San Francisco players who can try and you know blo make blocks on the edge. But listen, if you're a defensive back and there's an offensive lineman in front of you, don't try to go through him. Go around him. That's exactly what those two uh, players do for Cleveland. The ball ends up being incomplete anyway. I was almost wondering if uh, Purdy thought that he was uh, he should have been throwing that to Trent Williams, the offensive lineman, who also had a rough play on that one. Uh, maybe he got a little confused given the way that that kind of went down. But even if that was complete, it was going to be tackled for no gain. I mean, uh, assuming there wasn't missed tackles, which, you know, sometimes happens. It is uh, San Francisco, but you feel pretty good it wouldn't have happened on this play. And that's just what Cleveland can do to you. I mean, they're just a team that they did not get beat very often. San Francisco has a really good offense, but I do think that to some degree, this was also just Cleveland matching that good offense. So yeah, I had to make a video, you know, a lot of times on this channel, it's a very much, you know, I talk about quarterbacks a lot. That's what I'm interested in. That's what most of my viewers are interested in. But sometimes you got to make a video talking about a defense and why they can be as good as they are. So had to do that here. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.